Hello, my name is Mark Anthony Dubose Jr. And I was born July 4th, 1986. Today, I gotta make a disclaimer up front on this video and state that, uh, you know, if I get deep in your feelings, I know I'm gonna say I'm sorry, but I'm just doing what I gotta do and saying what I gotta say based on the experience that I've come to experience on this planet and some things I just gotta say and gotta talk about that. I'm not gonna be able to make everybody happy. It's something that I, I used to be about as a little kid, but I've, I've learned that you know, more than half of this world in reality just doesn't care about me and about 25% of y'all wanna see me dead. It just is what it is. So I'm gonna say some things that are not, not gonna agree with what everybody wants to say agree with. And, and, and I believe that that's the reason why I stand up and I speak and, I, and I'm saying what I'm saying and I'm doing what I'm doing. Because you don't need to agree with what it is that I say. You don't need to go along with what I say. Especially when it comes down to working with dogs, with horses, with chickens, with donkeys, with cows, with trying to get an understanding of knowing who God is and trying to get Jesus in your life. You're not going to agree with everything that I say, and you're never going to agree with what everybody on this planet has to say. And that's something that I want to say that's going to be very, very powerful information that everybody needs to hear is don't just latch on to what one person has to say. Listen to what they say and say, you know, I understand what's going on, but let me look over there as well if you're trying to do this as a profession, the stuff that I'm talking about today, which is dog training. Don't take just one trainer's advice and say, that's it. That's, that's, that. I think that that's where we're struggling today in the dog training world. That we're, we're taking one person's experience and saying, that's the right way, that's, that's it, that's it. And I'm gonna keep doing that, I'm gonna do that. And you're not looking elsewhere. Because that trainer is strong about what it is that they do. And in a lot of us, we have this thing called the ego people that we don't wanna let go and think that someone else can do something better than what it is that we have. And for me, I don't care about being the better. I don't care about being the best. I don't care about being the greatest. I care about making sure that I can help people out. That's all I care about. I don't wanna look better myself. And that's what, what's kind of struggling with a lot of, say, dog trainers out here, is they wanna look the best. They wanna be the best. They wanna, they wanna say they perform the best. Who cares if what you do can't translate to who you're trying to explain it to, teach it to, guide. And that's where we're having a disconnect. Because there's something that I want to talk about today and that comes down to the whole concept of the, the, the dog reactive dog and the human reactive dog and the dog that's just reactive on leash. That I get extremely high, if not I'm still at 100% success, That it, it, maybe not in a couple of minutes, but in a couple of days that I get that dog to stop doing that. Who cares what I can do? that I could get that dog to stop reacting on leash. I could get it to stop barking at dogs. I can get it, and I'm not doing anything, but just in my mind, in my body, stating I don't want that. I don't want the dog to do that. I don't care for the dog to bark at anybody. I'm telling that dog I don't want it. And it does it a few times with me, and then they always stop, and they look at me like, dude, what's, what's up with you? You're not, you're not giving me any, any feedback here. It's because I'm not gonna feed into that. Just because I can do that. And the same with any other trainer out here that you use treats the whole way. Use the whole C trigger, give treat, C trigger. Because you can do that with someone else's dog that's reactive doesn't mean that you can convince that other person to be able to have those same results. That's where the real training really should start to come, where you're able to teach that other person to do that. And that's why today I see failure going on. I see people, people stumbling. I see people running into the situation that they just don't know what to do. Because we as trainers come in and do stuff and we get the dogs to perform, we get the dogs to look good, but then as soon as I hand that leash over, the dog goes right back to doing all of the exact same things again. It is no better. It is, and if anything, it's actually worse because of certain things that we do with the dogs, where the dogs are going to give us respect in a way that, especially if you're, say, doing boarding trains, we're fast tracking here, man. For me, that's why I personally don't like them unless the dog is going, it's biting, it's, it's, it's in danger. We're putting people's lives in danger. Because I need to build a relationship with that dog, and I can't just get that in, t in 24 hours. I want to hang out with that dog for a month, maybe two months, before I get to go and like, let me apply some pressure with anything to try to convince you to do anything. Because I want the dog to, to know that I'm, I, he's going to be scared of me. That's why he's going to look so good. But then he gets back to you, he's going to be scared for a minute, maybe two days, maybe three days, and he's going to go right back to the same old stuff again. And that's what a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people are running and stumbling into this situation of thinking that, the trainer, my dog looks great, but with me, I'm not getting anywhere. And, and the, the, the techniques that we're using to try to get people in better places, I get it. You as the trainer are able to get that person to be able to do something fantastic. But you, that person is not able to do that when you disappear. And that's why there's always, 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 just in my opinion of what it is that I do out here with I work with dogs, there's always going to be a need for a trainer like me that comes in that uses the concepts of pressure release of the, of the, of the leash. There's always going to be that need. Because at the end of the day, that, the dog is going to have an overall end of life better experience. It's just what it is. 
It's just what's going to continue to keep happening because the dogs are able to figure it out on their own without us having to keep on intervening all of the time. When dog on its own feels pressure, it on its own decides I'm going to get out of it. I'm not telling it anymore. I'm guiding it to teach it what I want at first, but I'm not telling it anymore. And that's something that, you know, I was reading some, not reading, but I was listening to some, uh, Johnny, you can get up. I was listening to some, uh, a bunch of, a bunch of interviews this past couple of days with, you know, I'm not a scientist. I, I'm just a guy that trains some dogs and I just, I work, I work dogs and, and, and there's one great thing I'm going to say about us as human beings that I may not know all the information, but I sure can go find someone that knows way more information than I know. And I can keep bouncing off and leaning off and gleaning off and, and linking up with those people that do know more than anything that I have ever had any experience with. I don't have 10 years of school and, and some science degree and, and some behaviorist degree to be able to explain some things perfectly, but I sure can't listen to somebody and get information from them that's in it, that's been in it, to be able to give that information to somebody else. And there's something today that I heard that, don't make fun of me, I got a, a dog notebook. Someone gave it to me and I greatly appreciate that. But something that this lady was stating today is some, some terms and some information that I've just never thought of. And I'm just like, huh. What, what? I wonder how many other people are thinking about this, and I want you to get. I want people to start to think about something. And she was saying, "What is the operational definition of the training that we're doing?" And it's, "What is a trained dog?" So what she's stating here is the simple fact of. Hey, Johnny, get off the donkey, man. The simple fact of, what is a trained dog to you? What is a trained dog to me? What is a trained dog, and what are these scientific studies doing? that is saying now, now the dog is trained. That's something that we're having a huge disconnect with because in reality, a lot of these studies are going through getting a dog to sit, getting a dog to sit with a treat over getting a dog to sit with pressure, leash and collars and all this stuff. Is, is that what's considered training the dog? Is that a trained dog? Is that what we're looking for to say is trained dogs? To get dogs to sit, get dogs to down, get, it, get dogs to place, to get dogs to do these things. There's one command that I'm like, I hear what you're saying, the recall. That's to me is, when I can have a dog come back and no matter what distraction, that to me is what I'm going to say is a trained dog. That dog is very aware of listening to my voice and coming to me when it's called. Not getting it to sit and down and do these things, but to get my dog out of a dangerous situation because a recall is used for, for anything. I mean, a dog is attempting to bite a dog. Hey, Johnny, come here. And a dog, you're good. And a dog is going to come right away. You, it's not going to get itself into that danger. If a dog is chasing my dog, hey, dude, come here. And now we're double teamed. Now the dog that's chasing my dog is more likely going to back down and say, hey, you got both of y'all together now. Your dog is running into the street. Hey, Johnny, come here. You good. I'm going to use a different name. Uh, 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 come here. That's going to get your dog out of that sticky situation. So to me, as a trainer, that's what I would think of as saying is a trained dog. But to someone else, it's a perfect sit in all, in all distractions. It's a perfect down in all distractions. It's, the perf it's a perfect place command in the house that they can sit there for, for eight hours. It's a perfect being able to get them to stay in their crate for 12 hours. And, you know, that's the differences that we all have. And then the same thing is what a lot of these, say, scientific researches and studies is doing. What are the, what's the criteria here? So when they're doing a sit, what's around? Is it just a sterile room where there's nothing and there's no other dogs, there's no other people, there's no squirrels and rabbits, there's no, there's no birds, there's no cars, there's no, there's no nothing, and they're getting it to do that? So, of course, in a scenario like that, of course the treats are going to look really good. It's going to be awesome. And the number one thing I'll say is, well, amazing, with the recall. When there's, you're in your house by yourself and you get your dog to come to, it's so easy. But now, when your dog is in drive, when it's staring at something, it's looking at that chicken, and you're trying to tell your dog to come back, is it that simple at that point? So when these studies are going down to say that something is better than the other, we have to figure out the whole core of what's going on here. You know, something that I say is figure out the actual problem that's happening and then start fix, fixing the, 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 the real problem instead of just masking the outside stuff. And that's what we're doing right now as dog trainers in reality. We're just fixing the, the bark, the bite. We're not fixing what's wrong with them. And what's wrong with most of these dogs in this, say, reactive situation is something that only the dog and the owner have to deal with and get through. No one else can, in reality, come in to fix that. I can coach you to teach you. This is where I'm going to say the, 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 the use of the pressure release comes in. I could teach your dog that pressure let go, but I still have to teach you, the owner, how to, how to communicate that effectively so the dog turns into automatic with it. And it's something that is, is getting very, very confusing because in a sterile environment, such as inside of your home, it is so easy to do all this stuff. But bring your dog on my property here and show him a treat and let them see the, these chickens out here. I wanna see that your dog is gonna perform, that that treat is gonna get your dog from stop actively chasing the chickens. Cause I know what happens to the dogs. 
when the dogs get into drive and they get into especially prey drive they get into the the real prey drive not this toys and this weird i'm talking real stuff here i'm talking a real chasing after a dog chasing after a bunny chasing after a chicken chasing after a deer the dogs are focused they are laser focused they shut the world out and they just they they're just bam in it they're in it they're not they're, they're not even hearing anything and I've heard some stuff that the dogs have glands in their ears that they start to swell up. So they literally just shut the world out and they are focused. So your words are no longer, because I, I noticed when my dogs go and fence fight. That's why I had to make sure that I dialed that down. When they're at 100 going crazy, it, it's pointless. I got to walk all the way out there. I got to actually get in their way and say, hey, hey, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here for them to actually be able to stop. And, 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 and that's why today I, I don't allow them to get that far up. So they're constantly listening at all times. They're never just full rage. That's why my dogs can chase the chicks and not do anything and listen to me when I say to stop because they're not fully enraged. If a dog has never been taught how to do such a thing, it's fully enraged. And you are not. You are not. I don't care who, who you are on this planet. You are not going to give that dog a cookie, a treat, any sort of praise, any sort of toy to get them to stop chasing that when they're fully engaged in that. Something else has to go on here. And that's the stuff that we're just not talking about. We're talking about behind the scenes pretty and ice cream looking stuff and not reality and and dog training is getting to be tv shows and not reality what's real is we have real distractions in our lives we have people that knock on our doors that we don't know who they are we have people that come inside of our houses that we don't know who they are we got maintenance people we've got i mean some of us that live in in rental places i'm thankful my, my landlord never come around here i don't know why he should but uh uh, uh, no one, people, random people are coming into your house when you aren't even there. They tell you, hey, put your pets up if you got them in the house and we're going to come in and, and do a fixeroo on the fridge or something. You've got random people. You don't know who the heck they are coming inside of your household. This is real world stuff here. This isn't something that I could just set up to just get, get through. So the dogs need to understand what's going on here. And, and that's where, for me, I have a very good understanding of a lot of stuff is just, it's, it, it's failing. And that's why I'm going to say there's always going to be a need for pressure trainers, balance trainers and all these trainers out here that use said tools that people are just wanting to say be so far against because there's something i'm going to say you know i i'm not one to just complain just say oh this all this, this i'm the one that's also going to say and come up with uh, uh solutions for problems that we got going on and and this is going to not go well with a lot of people when i say this but this is where we're headed to people and i can i don't know why but i just I, certain things that i see in my life i'm just like, that's about to happen and for some reason i just see it and there's something that's about to happen here that a lot of people aren't going to like it and other people are going to be very excited about. For me personally, what I'm about to say, I'm on both sides of it, more on the side of I like this idea. And this is where we're headed next, people. If your dog is no longer in control on a six-foot leash outside, it's going to have to be considered what is the, the, the law in Texas here. I live in Texas. Anybody don't know where I'm at. The law in Texas here is a dangerous dog has rules on it. And the classifications of a dangerous dog isn't to the point that it even has killed a dog. It's, it's a dog that you cannot control. And if a dog is not in your control, when you see another dog, when you see a squirrel, when you see this, and your dog is just flipping out, going crazy, barking, snapping, snarling, lunging, going savage, we now have what's considered a dangerous dog. Because if that dog were to get loose off of that six foot static leash that's in your hand, now we're in a, the, the people outside anywhere else are now in a dangerous situation. And not even just another dog that is going, but the cars that are driving by as well. That it sees your dog running across the street it's going to have to do something so it doesn't hit your dog, and that can cause even more mayhem. So we have dangerous dogs that are walking around on the streets, and I don't care what anybody says. That's why your faces look the way they look when your dog is going crazy, because you're scared of what your dog is going to do. And if you are scared of what your dog is going to do, that is considered a dangerous dog. I am not scared at all about what my dogs do, where I go. I don't care. I know that they're good. And that's what I'm going to say is a lot of us have, and you don't have a dangerous dog. Thank Awesome. But there's going to some, something that's going to have to happen. And someone's recommending, and a lot of people are recommending that we need to get to get a, a, some sort of, of uh, what is that called, certifications and stuff for dog trainers. And that's not going to help anything because we're still going to have dangerous dogs out there. And the main thing that's going to be able to say help this, that I see that could help it, is, you know how we drive cars? Car insurance wasn't always required. Because I remember when I was younger, I don't believe it actually was required when I was a baby kid. Just like seatbelts weren't required. We didn't have to require to wear the stuff. We just got in the van and we were riding around. Seatbelts, well, I think I was like 7, 10 years old or so by the time the seatbelts became like mandatory. We all had to do it. I remember the huge protest. Oh, don't tell me to wear my no seatbelt. I'm not wearing no seatbelt. But now everybody puts seatbelt on. Same thing with car insurance. Car insurance wasn't required. It was like a, it was a luxury because you had your car, you could get it fixed. And that's something that is starting to become a, a, a thing now with dogs. It's insurance. 
And it's no longer going to be just insurance because it's a luxury because, oh, my dog, just this. But if you have what's considered a dangerous dog, you need to have comprehensive insurance on your dog so that when your dog does do something of damage to something else, that needs to get paid out. So to have your dog to be in public or even free inside of your backyard or even free inside of your home, you need to have a comprehensive uh, insurance claim uh, uh, policy on your dog so that if something were to happen, that everything would be able to get sorted out with it. And that would have to be mandatory. And another thing, if you want to take your dog into being in a public place or being free inside of your backyard, the dog needs to be mandatorily wearing a muzzle at all times. It needs to have some sort of muzzle to make sure that it couldn't bite and it couldn't put damage at all times. Certain things like this, what I would say step up the game of the real issues that's going on here is us as humans, as individual dog owners, but getting stuff done and going to someone that's actually going to get us the results that we need and putting like, like a, a haste up, uh, behind us to actually make it have to get done. The trainers are doing what the people want. The people are needing assistance. You need help to get your dog from stop lunging to stop going crazy. You're going to find someone to get you to get your dog to stop doing that. And if you're not getting success from going to one place because the, the treats and all that's not working, all right, you're just not a pairing with that. You got to go somewhere else to get that done to make sure that you are not having a dog that is destructive to society. Everything that we have in this life is to make sure, in, in our world here in the United States of America, is to make sure that society is going to be good to go. But yet with our dogs, we're slacking because we're allowing these dogs to kill other dogs. We're allowing these dogs to kill people, to kill kids, to kill people's uh, chickens and goats and cows and all kinds of stuff. I've had neighbor's dogs here attempting to kill my chickens. They almost did, but I got other dogs to be able to make sure that they stay the heck out of here so that doesn't happen. And so I've had personal experience with this. I've had pet cats that came over and killed all of my thousands of my quail. Pet cats coming over here. So I, I, I've dealt with this and been in this myself. That there needs to be some sort of insurance policy so that when it comes over here and does all that and destroys all my stuff, that I, I'm, I'm about to hit your claim and, and I'm about to get my stuff figured out here. It's not just going to be, oh, I'm so sorry, and, and just please, please go on our way. No, there, there's going to be something that goes down with this. And then, of course, the unfortunate part with that is, as soon as you start mandating insurances like that, then you have to start making it a, a law. And that law states that if you don't have this and a cop can pull you over or stop you and check to see your papers to see that your dog is looking crazy, and you don't have those papers, now what? You, you get your dog, have to, you have to surrender your dog. Now, now you, you're going to be without your dog. And some of y'all, that might be a blessing, unfortunately, because you just really don't like your dogs, you want to give up on them. But that's something that is going to happen in our future. It's not going to come down to the fact of the uh, 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 trainers need to be certified and something to be able to help. Because if the people aren't getting the help that they need, then th it, we're, we're, we're going nowhere. We're just going in circles. We're not getting anywhere. If you want to ban all the equipment, ban the e-collars and ban the prong collars and ban the choke chains and ban all these things and ban crates and, and, and we get more and more crazy wild. Not saying that they, we will, just saying that if that happens... You know, I'm not going to quit. I'm just going to adapt because that's what I am as a human being. I'm not going to, ah, I can't use an e-collar no more, so I'm not going to train dogs. I, no, I'm going to adapt to do what I need to do to help as many people out as possible. And if that means I need to remove myself from, from business and, and, and isolate myself to work on some dogs behind the scenes to get better at doing what I need to do to make sure that I'm not using any of these tools, and that's what I'm going to do. But that's not everybody. You know, some people are going to protest. It's like crazy for me. I'm not going to protest it. I don't care what, to, what you ban. I'm still going to do my work. I'm still going to get stuff done. I'm still going to get the success that I need to be able to get to the people because I care about making sure that the people are getting the help that they need. But a lot of this is going to start to get very, very sticky for just the average regular person because it's going to make dog ownership be a, 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 a huge ordeal. No longer just, oh, I'm going to pick up a cute, fluffy dog. And the same thing, something I was speaking of the other day is, is the concept of we have so many people that just want to give up on dogs and just put them in the shelters. You know, there's certain circumstances where I understand what's going on. But for the most circumstances, it's not. It's you just giving up. So we got child support. Why don't we have dog support? You want to give it? You got to pay a certain amount of your monthly income to make sure that that dog's going to be able to get rehomed and or wherever it's going or whatever it's going to do. What's going to happen with it? To make sure they can have a good, a good setup to be able to move to the next place it needs to move to. Because our shelters are overran and they're, they're, they don't have no budget to be able to take care of the dogs the way they need to be taken care of. But if we were getting uh, a dog support from every single person, we would have the right facilities to make sure that the dogs are able to get rehabilitated, get training, and be able to move on to, the, to find a better place to be able to do something. There's, there's certain things that are, are, are going to start to happen that a lot of people aren't going to like. And it's, it's not going to come down to making it easier for us, but it's going to make it much, much more complicated. And now we're going to have mandatory tests that we're going to have to do. And now we're going to have mandatory taxes that are going to get added to us to be able to pay for the, the public officials and the, uh, the, the jobs to be able to support all these things to make sure that everyone's going to be good to go. You know, there, there, there's so much going on here that I don't think people are paying attention to. You're looking at the, we, let's fight about what's the right technique. As opposed to getting people help that they need. And stop bashing someone because of what it is that they do and the techniques that they use. 
just understand that they're getting the success that they need to give to their clients. Now, if you, you're, you're just a single dog owner and you don't, you don't help anybody, you, don't, you, don't, you only care about getting your dog to be good and you want to work on your dog, then, then, then I say, get it done, man. Stop waiting around on it. Start working on it. Start doing something. And if that means that you have to bring someone in, you, you have to. You, ha you absolutely have to. You can't just think that it's going to get better one day. You, we, we have to take action and get something done now. And if it's a dog where it's just, I don't know, and I can't, then you got to find someone to take over. Find someone that'll take over that dog for you so that you can be able to get, this, get, get the dog into a place that it's not going to be dangerous to society. We have so many dogs out here today that are in absolute danger. Danger to society, man. They, 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 they are waiting and willing and worse than any child with a gun in his hand, man. It's, going, it's getting crazy out here because we're not, we're not taking care of them the way that we need to. I don't care what method you use. I don't care what approach you take. But the one thing I am going to say is please, please, please don't terrify the dogs that they don't, they don't understand life, that they're just scared. Those training methods are done. Some people use it for certain circumstances, certain things I have to do. But I never, ever, ever, ever am going to have a dog laying down coward, scared because of I'm doing something to it. Like, I don't care if it's bite. I don't care if it's killed somebody. I'm never going to take a dog to the point that just, just beat it in submission and roll it down and tell it what I want and, and looking for this from it. I'm not going to do that. With my own dog, because I bring in a dangerous dog, I might have to do something. But that's for you to do your own self. But me, I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't like that. I don't see the need in that. I don't see the need in putting pressure upon a dog to make it scared of me to the point that it only walks on leash politely because it's, it's terrified. No, the only thing that I'm going to make sure that my dog has a slight bit of fear in is if it's doing something that's dangerous, man. If I see my dog running out into the street, I'm not going to throw a cookie and say, please don't, because it's going to convince him to keep doing such a thing. I want that to be done because that, I could lose a dog. And not only that, I could lose a dog and traumatize someone else, the person that hit the dog. How traumatic is that for someone to hit a dog in the street? There's a lot going on. It's not just you, yours, and, and the dog. There's someone else involved. And what if someone slams or breaks, hits your dog, kills your dog, someone from behind them hits them and kills that driver? There's so many variables here. And a lot of us got big dogs today, man. We don't have these little things. These are big dogs. It's like hitting a human and, and it's big dogs, man. It's going to hit the cars and it's going to be a lot. And, and there's a lot of dangerous stuff. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have something in my dog and say, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. But for chasing a chicken or chasing a cow, you know, I don't care. It's not that serious. For not sitting, not downing, whatever, dude. For not walking perfect on the leash, man, we'll get there. We'll get there. But for reacting at a dog and lunging and barking and going crazy, dangerous. We got to do something to say we're not doing that anymore because now we're in a very sticky situation and things have to be done to get the dogs to get out of that. And I don't care what, what route you take, but it has to get out of that. We're, we're getting to the point that flipping out and reactive on the leash is like normal. It's like, oh, it's, it's okay. My dog's just reactive. It just, it just growls and snaps and, and puts teeth on other dogs. You know, it just, it's just what it is. No, this isn't okay. This isn't just, just all right. This isn't something that we just, we just, just ignore and just say it's going to be all right. It's something that we need to put a lot of time and energy in and, and focus a lot of our time right this moment, right this second, and get it done right now. Right now. I don't care what your bank account looks like right now. You need to call someone and figure it out and get a credit card and find someone to bring them in and get it help right now. And, and get the, the help and understand that it's the other person cannot do it all for you, especially a reactive dog. They cannot do it for you. You have to do it. It's you with your dog. I do this over and over and over all dang day. I take someone's dog and I leave them behind and I go for a walk and the dog stops barking at things. It just completely calms down. It's got nothing to do with the said training on the dog. It's the relationship with the dog. That's why I love, I don't know what it is, but uh, I don't know if y'all know, this is why we do this fancy looking stuff on, online with the obedience things to, because dog training in reality is so freaking boring. It is boring. It is, it's not for everyone, I'm going to say, because if you can't just stand in your own thoughts, me and your own thoughts, and just hang out and just relax for hours in the day, it's not for you because it's boring. It's so boring. And that's why a guy that I, I started watching a lot of his videos before, the Robert Hines, his videos is what real dog training really looks like. It's boring. You watch it for like 30 seconds. Ah, I don't see no action. Let me just turn it. But you're not. That's real. He's showing people the reality of what's going on, that the dog is reacting because it's with the owner. When it's not with the owner, the dog is like, it's good to go. It's the owner with the dog that's having the issue. So the owner with the dog has to work on it. No one on the outside can do anything. And if the owner and the dog doing the treats method is not working for the owner and the dog, you need to find something that's going to work for you. 
You need to find something that's going to work. And that's why there's always, always, always going to be a need for trainers out here that are considered balanced, use this, use this, and use pressure and use force and use it. There's always going to be that need because people are, are, are not understanding how to be able to get the correct information that you need to see with your dog on your leash results, not someone else holding the leash, not someone else doing things behind closed doors because the dog is going to continue to keep doing it. And because and the main thing that I see is you, we are telling the dogs to do what they're doing. We are telling the dogs to bark. We are telling the dogs to lunge and get them out of there. We are telling them to, to get the squirrels out. Not only squirrels are squirrels. They just like, some dogs like squirrels. It is what it is. But especially the dogs and the kids and the strollers. My goodness. Well, I don't know why so many dogs are fixated on strollers, man. That's so dangerous to me. Let a dog run at me I'm pushing my stroller. That's, that's going to be a dead dog. It's going to be a dead baby or a dead dog. I'm choosing one. And that's what we have to really think about here in life. So many dogs are focused, focused, focused on, do on strollers. Focused on bikes, focused on rollerbladers, focused on skates, focused on all these things, and they're just, they're ready to go. That's dangerous. We got to get them out of that. And that's, the owner is the only one that's going to be able to figure that out. And if we don't start figuring this out, I'm telling you, I know it's coming. It's going to be mad. I see, I looked up insurance, about to get a new dog, thinking about putting insurance on. I was looking to see, like, this is getting huge now. I'm like, this is impressive. I, anybody wants to start up a, a, a co-funded business, that's a, pet insurance is a business to get into right, <laughs> right now. I want to talk to my landlord about that. And anybody else want to get in on that, that's about to be the next booming business to, to be able to make yourself good. Ain't going to be nothing about working with no dogs. It's going to be pet insurance, man. Pet insurance and pet treats. Pet insurance. Pet insurance is going to start to be mandatory on the dogs. There's workplaces now that are offering it to work for them. They'll give it to you as a as a as a one of your benefits. It's starting to become powerful and it's going to start to it, it's going to be mandatory. Because let enough dogs start biting and hurting other people, it's going to be mandatory. These bills are not cheap for going and getting reconstructive surgery because a dog bit you. The the bills are not cheap to go in and get 10 stitches. My goodness. Nowadays to go and get 10 stitches in your arm, that's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I am not going to put that on someone else because of what my dog did. I need to cover that. And if I don't have the funds in my bank account to cover this $15,000 uh, uh, a medical bill right now, plus another four or $5,000 worth of follow-up appointments, then there needs to be a way to be able to cover that. Because you, what, I don't know what it is in our country that we all don't have just free health care and everything ain't that way. And, you know, If I had my ways, we would all have free health care and free things, but that's just not the way it works. And the way that our system works now is stating that we, we, we need to make sure that things are being taken care of. Things are going to be safe out here. And muzzles need to be put upon dogs that are reactive and going a little crazy so that the rest of the society can calm down. There's a whole side of this that people want to get rid of all dogs because they're dangerous. And I don't blame them. But that's just not realistic because dogs are awesome, man. They're awesome. I, I hear you that they could be dangerous, but they they awesome. But for others that don't want to be around them and are, aren't, are nervous about them and their nervousness that they have in their body gets your dog to want to react even more, the dog needs to be in a muzzle to be able to make sure that that person that's scared of that dog is able to be able to live freely in this world and not have to feel like it's got to, it's got to hide, it's got to run away. It should, we all should be able to feel comfortable where we go. And that's, that's, we're having issues today because we're allowing the dogs to be able to make people not feel comfortable in this world. And I know this is, this is, this is something that it's going to be hard for some people to, to really want to understand and listen to and just, just really think about. But I'm getting tired of people just yelling and bickering back and forth and having no solutions. We need solutions. We need to start thinking and talking amongst each other about how can we figure this out to make things better. How can we figure this out to make sure that everybody is safe and get away from which technique and this technique and that technique and this technique. The technique don't matter. The results what matters. And if the dog and the longevity of the dog, the dog goes through stress for the first two or three days and the dog in the next two years, that's one thing that science also does not put into its mix. What's the four or five months from now? What's the year from now? What's the three years from now like? Instead of just the right here, right now. Right here, right now is what science is all about. And that's why it's always forever changing. But what's it going to be like later on? Right now, it sounds good. It looks good. Things that we do today sounds good. It looks good. But what's going to happen 20 years from now? And then in the dog's life, what's happening in the dog's life two years from now? That's what we should be really paying more and more attention to. Because the day I got all my dogs, things, things, things were wild, man. We had stress. We had times that, that we, we were button heads. We had times that the dogs didn't like what things were going through. When I had explained to every single one of these dogs to, to not kill the chickens, they, they didn't like it, but we're calm today. And they actually get to chase them and play and have way more freedom today than they ever did in the beginning when they were trying to just kill them. So there's a huge difference that goes on here, that they may be going through a little bit of stress up front, but they're going to have a way greater life in the end. And that's something that a lot of us should really think about. 
Because if, if, if we're only thinking about, I don't want to put pressure upon my dog right now because I don't like the way that looks, we're headed to disaster in our future, people. We're, we're, we're headed to a place that the more that we're fighting and the more that people are, are trying to hide what they do and, and do what they do with these dogs, the worse and worse that they're going to keep on getting. They're just getting, they're going to get to the point that it's not going to be controllable. And, and at that moment, it's going to be dangerous. Because I don't know why. People love dangerous dogs, man. Go get you these little small things. I mean, I heard about a story today that a Yorkie killed another Yorkie. It's not, not that they can't do it, but my goodness, it's way better than like this huge shepherd I have. Than a huge Pyrenees. Than a huge German Shepherd. Than a huge Rottweiler. Than a huge Connie Corso. Than a huge Presa Canaria. Than a huge Bully XL. Than, 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 we're getting like the most dangerous dogs. And we're thinking that everything is going to be okay. If you have a dog that's over 40 pounds and it's reactive on leash, that, that, that's scary, man. That's scary. And the trainers can't do nothing about it. Only the owner can. Only the owner needs to make the decision to be able to do something about it. And the thing is, the owner's people need to have a better understanding of how to actually be able to get results and why it's happening in the first place. We're thinking that we could take our reactive dog. You can't take it somewhere and get it fixed. you got to fix it. Until we start understanding that and getting on the same page with that, we're all going to be failing each other. That's why I do not fail a single one of my clients. Day one, you're walking with me, man. We're, you're walking. You're, you're with me. Everything I do, everywhere I go, we're together. Because the dog only does it when you're here. I, all I need to do, they only need to be there. I can hold the leash and they can be there. That's it. If they're not there, it's a different, a whole different picture, whole different situation. But they have to be there. The, you got to be there the whole time. So when you got a trainer that's like, I'll fix your reactive dog. I'll take him over here. I'll take him back to the woods and do this and bring him back and he'll be fine. No, that's not going to work. You need to find that trainer that's going to be right there side by side with you the, the entire time until that dog gets to the point that it's able to just be able to relax around anything and everybody. You need to be there hand in hand the entire time. And that's the only way you're going to be able to find any success. And the success happens in all methods. You can go with the treats. They see trigger, give the treat, but the trainer needs to be there guiding you every day, all the time, until you get through that. Because it's you, yourself, with your own dog that's going to have to fix that. No one else can fix it for you. We can manipulate some with pressure, but that dogs, they'll fight through that pressure. I've seen dogs fight through e-collars. I don't care what system, oh, there's one system that probably won't get them, but no one's going to spend $1,300 on a system to try to get your dog right. These ones that are two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500, the dogs will fight through it, man. They will take that pressure. As soon as they feel it and they know what it is, they'll fight through it. They'll fight through that prong collar like it's nothing. They don't care. Dogs are tough. They are strong. And as soon as they tighten up that neck, and you pull on that collar and that dog says, ah, heck no, I'm still doing it because I know you want me to do it. The dog is going to continue to keep going. It's not going to, nothing's going to solve it. Nothing's going to solve it. Same with the treats. It's everything. We need to figure out what's going on here with, with you and the dog, or we're going to end up in a sticky situation in this planet. Something that I've just come to realize about being, being on this planet and doing what I'm doing is the better and better you get with being able to give people actual results, the more and more pushback people want to give that person. Because it's almost like, we want to see people fail. We actually don't want to see people get better. And I don't know what the deal is with that, but it just is what it is. And since I kind of just really know that that just is what it is, I, I'm against that. I'm about helping the other person to make sure that they can do better than I do. I want people's dogs to look better than mine. I go to the lake and I see some of my old clients and I'm like, dude, your dog is actually next to you with you better than mine is right now. I love that. I don't know why. And then I'm like, hey, I got to work on mine some more right now because I like how that looks. I like how that looks. And, and that's, there's something powerful behind that. And the more that you're able to do that for people, the more people want to shut you down. The more that you actually do know, the more people want to shut you down. There's so many doctors uh, uh, of all the science and all these projects that we got going on with dogs on YouTube right now. And they get shut the heck down. They got like 200 subscribers. They got like 20 views on all of their videos. They're getting silenced. They're all out here, people. Look them up. They're, they got hours, two, three, four hour uh, lectures that they're doing. They got all these talks. They got all these interviews. And they got like 200 subscribers and like, like literally all their videos that have two views on it. But they're out here speaking the truth of what's going on. The people that are actually doing the studies, explaining to you what the studies actually are. The people that are going through all the, the, the writing out the reviews and all the stuff, doing it all. They're all out here for us to be able to see. They're speaking. They're speaking up. But no, they get shut down. So there's someone else that can say false claims gets, gets, gets promoted. But the real ones are getting shut down. You know, it's this... If, this sounds the same as everything that we do with everything. When they say, oh, don't do this because it's not going to make you better, but it actually does make you better, but they try to shut that down. I don't know why. Because that's, again, I think that there's a push on this planet to make sure that everyone is doing worse than what one person is doing. And when you start doing better than somebody else, we got, we got problems. And, and that's just absolute chaos. Thank you.
up, Johnny?